What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the Navigation Studio and Fiend Designer on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we're talking all about the Navigation Studio and Fiend Designer on the iPad which I think is a studio that a lot of people never even think about because it doesn't do all that much except basically control the view that you're looking at. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the unique features that are found in the Navigation Studio. All right, so here in Affine Designer, we're going to go ahead and look at the Navigator Studio. And this is going to be almost the last studio along the right-hand side. It looks like a compass rose. So if you go all the way down there, right before you get to the one that looks like a clock, you'll see the one that looks like a compass rose, and that is the Navigator Studio. Now, before we open it, I want to show you the shortcut that is here. And that is if you swipe on that studio, you can actually zoom in and out. So if you swipe up, you'll zoom in. And if you swipe down, you'll zoom out. And that's just by being on the icon of the studio. So you can control it that way. Now, a lot of things that can be controlled in the Navigation Studio, similar to how this was in the Transform Studio, a lot of things that we can do here in the Navigation Studio are actually things that we can do with gestures out on the canvas itself. So you're probably familiar with zooming in and out just on the canvas, which you just pinch with your fingers. So I can pinch to zoom in and pinch to zoom out. And that's pretty simple. But if we open up the Navigator Studio, we're going to have some more refined controls. And the reason we're using this example document with multiple artboards is so that you can see where this might be useful. It's especially useful when you get into documents where you have a lot going on and you want to be able to move around it quickly. The Navigator Studio can really help you with that. So besides just being able to swipe, when the navigator is open, you can see there's this window area. And so with the navigator open, you can actually see your entire document at a glance, and you can even use that window to actually pan around it. So you can just drag around that window to get where you want to go. This is very useful if, say, we just hit this 200% here, and we can just see the edge here, but we really want to be up on one of the green ones. We can just drag on our window to navigate there very quickly, and that can be quite helpful. Okay, let's go back to fit. Fit will just make everything that you currently have, all of your artboards, no matter how many you have, it will make them all fit to the screen. And then of course you have 50%, 100%, and 200%. And you can also see your current zoom level. So when I hit fit, it went to 33%. You can see that in the bottom right hand corner of that view window there. So that's pretty simple zoom stuff there. Really, a lot of the times you will just handle zoom with the pinch gestures, but sometimes it might be really useful, especially on large documents, to have this studio open. Okay, down below that we have controls for the canvas. Now there's another zoom control on the right, but before we get to that one, you're going to see the rotation control. And currently you can't do anything with that. If I drag on it, nothing happens because you can see this lock icon is on. So the rotation control is actually locked. And I really like this that it's not on by default because even if I put my fingers on the canvas and try and pivot them, you can see I'm just zooming in them now. It's not actually rotating. And I like that because I don't want to rotate it by accident. But if you are doing some hand drawing especially, you might really want to be able to rotate. So this is where you control that. So you just hit that lock and it will unlock. And then you can use this control to rotate by dragging on it. Or you can tap and set it to a specific angle. Or you also have the option now to use the gesture to rotate. So with that unlocked, you just use two fingers and you can rotate as you pivot them. And of course, the zoom in and out still works. So I'm going to turn that lock back on. And then we have another zoom control. This one's just more refined and we can put in exactly what we want. So if we want to be at exactly 25%, we just hit 25 and we can go exactly to 25%. Okay, we're almost done, but we have a couple of view options down here at the bottom. You can see that it is set to vector, and that's what it's going to be by default. The Fiend Designer is primarily a vector-based editor, but by tapping on it, we can change it to pixels, and this is easier to see with a vector object, whereas these artboards have a lot of rasterized objects on them. I'm going to go ahead and just make a rectangle here, and let's just give it a color. And then if we zoom in here, you can see what it looks like there, but then if we change this to pixels, you'll be able to see how you start to get this aliasing around the edge. So that's showing you what it would look like when this gets turned into a pixel object. Now there's also retina pixels, which is how this vector object would look on a more high density screen. You can see that that just changes it a little bit. And then there's also the one that I think is probably the most useful for most people, and this is outline. So when we change to outline, let me zoom back out here, you can start to see all of the different outlines that there are on your artwork. And a lot of times you do wanna be able to switch to outline just so you can really see what's happening with the different paths. Let's change that back to vector now. 
and show you what the split view does. So the split view will allow you to see on one side or the other. So let's go back to our vector object. And if I turn on split view mode to be in pixels, then you can see here where we have the aliasing on the right because that's pixels and the vector clean lines on the left. This would be useful to set to outline as well. So if you set this to outline, then you can just switch and change. And you can always just drag that forward and backward. And if you don't want it anymore, just come back here and click none. And that's the Navigator Studio in Affinity Designer on the iPad. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video about the Navigation Studio in Affinity Designer on the iPad. You know we have videos on all of the studios in Affinity Designer on the iPad and all the tools as well. So if you're interested, go ahead and check out that playlist. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.